Welcome to your weekly UAS news update. This is the week of July 26, 2021. And this week we get four topics and we have Haya again from DroneXL to discuss actually two of them uh, because two of them are pretty pressing. The first one is Hotel just issued a new update on their uh, drones and it's adding geofencing. And we'll talk about the implication that this has. The second one is DJI that was in the clear last week but is no longer in the clear this week. So this is a little bit confusing. We'll talk about what's going on here. We'll talk about the show that was at the Olympics. If you haven't seen it, we've got the footage. It was really, really cool to see the uh, the drone light show uh, going on at the uh, ceremony, the opening ceremony. And then the last thing we'll talk about a, an autonomous drone that supposedly is going to beat humans on a speed course. So let's get to it. Okay, the first topic this week is Hotel. And uh, to discuss this, we're gonna bring Haya from Drone Excel on our weekly uh, little uh, segment. Haya, what is going on with Hotel in this uh, new update? Good morning, Greg, and uh, thank you for having me on the show. Uh, Autel recently released a firmware update. It's now version 2.725, and it brings a number of new features to your drone, uh, but it also brings geofencing uh, to your drone. So I'll quickly run you through the features. We now have uh, panorama mode, customizable home uh, point option, meaning that you can select where you want the drone to fly back to in case of uh, low battery power, for instance. Uh, photo auto sync, meaning syncing your photos to your iOS device uh, instantly, uh, customizable A and I button, A and B buttons for speed mode, meaning you can uh, switch between ludicrous and normal modes right on your controller. I think that's a really nice feature as well. Uh, gimbal pitch adjustments, meaning that you can adjust or, or fine tune the rate at which the gimbal pitches for more cinematic and more smooth uh, video footage. And then lastly, they've added a no fly zone database update. And basically what this means is that in the countries, uh, Japan, the United States and greater China, as well as Australia, there is now going to be a warning notification if you're flying near a prison facility or near an airport. It doesn't restrict you from taking off with your drone. So it's not quite like geofencing the way that DJI has offered it uh, for years now. Um, but it gives the option to countries to say, hey, according to our laws, we need a drone manufacturer to restrict your drone flight if you're flying within, let's say, five miles of an airport. Uh, so it gives the option for countries to, to enforce it, basically. Now, in the United States, I don't think it's something that the FEA could enforce at this point. Um, however, Autel was always known for not having geofencing. I know a lot of people uh, specifically didn't buy DJI drones so that they would stay with Autel so they would have no issues with geofencing. Now the option is there for the FEA, uh, if it goes through Congress and if it becomes a, a law, I guess, uh, to actually enforce it and make you not be able to fly your Autel drone. So uh, it's something that's definitely uh, noteworthy. Yeah, that's a really interesting because, like you said, th this has been kind of in their DNA that they're, they're the, the no uh, geofencing brand and they've been advertising this and a lot of people enjoy that fact. Um, the, the good news is I think it's not as restrictive as what we see with DJI. Uh, I did see a, a little bit of a discussion this morning on Facebook uh, between Brendan and somebody else, Brendan Schulman from DJI. And um, uh, it, it is interesting to see, like you said, you know, the FA doesn't have this as a requirement, but it's interesting to see that China does and Japan has also a requirement so uh, the uh, hotel has had to comply with this and then now they're in kind of including this into the US so uh, it's it's not something that uh, Randall uh, Warner the new CEO discussed with us when we asked him the question that on the pixel drone show he said no we're not going to do uh, because I specifically asked that question I remember and uh, and he said no we're not going to going to do this so uh, It'll be interesting to see where this goes. I don't think it's a, it's a reason, obviously, to switch or anything. I think it's actually not a bad thing to be notified that you are in an area if you're close to a prison and uh, or if you're close to something dangerous. Maybe it, it's kind of a good notification to have. Um, I did see the update on my hotel. We uh, we just went through the uh, update system a couple of days ago, and and I noticed it, and I kind of mentioned it to Jason, who's in who was in the office, and I said that's interesting that they're doing geofencing. Are they really doing geofencing so we kind of scratch our heads and um, and then we haven't found it we, we flew it since we actually flew it in class D airspace um, in uh, in 400 foot class D airspace no notification or anything so my guess is that it's only for these areas that are going to be uh, pretty dangerous so um, yeah we'll be 
will be interesting. It make it makes you wonder though uh, what triggered this, right? I mean, was this something that Hotel came up with themselves, or because if you look at the countries like Greater China, so it's not just China, it's neighboring countries as well, uh, I suspect, then Japan, Australia, and the United States. So I wonder if this was triggered by some third party or like an outside organization, or whether this was something that came from uh, from within Hotel. Um, yeah, I agree with you. It's not a reason to switch. However, uh, Autel, the company that doesn't do geofencing, I guess uh, is a thing of the past now. Not so much anymore. Well, speaking of uh, Chinese companies, DJI was in the news again this week. And, uh, and I know you sent me that message as soon as it came out. Uh, so let's kind of recap. DJI is bad and the government can buy DJI drones. And then all of a sudden the Pentagon releases somewhat of a report, uh, which turns out was a rogue report, not an approved report that says, well, DJI isn't really all that bad. You can, uh, we actually should be buying drones again from DJI. And then all of a sudden this week, we have another report that comes in and says, uh, no, uh, DJI is bad. You can't buy it anymore. And you still can't buy it. And, uh, and they're, uh, they're a threat. So what, what's going on here? Yeah, it's a little crazy, right? I mean, uh, I guess your, your description is accurate. It was a rogue report apparently because the Department of Defense issued this statement saying that uh, nothing has changed. We still don't trust uh, DJI drones, specifically DJI drones, not just drones with Chinese made parts. Um, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a big deal and it makes you wonder um, if this is politically driven still. And I guess there's some, some infighting going on within the, the Department of Defense. Um, basically, the federal the federal government or any uh, federal grants being used cannot be used for the purchase of Chinese made drones, including DJI drones. That's still where things stand. However, uh, of course, DJI was quick to respond as well. And I'll, I'll read you the reply. This came directly from, uh, from Brandon Schulman. Uh, he says that the DOD statement confirms what DJI was told by a DOD official earlier this year that an internal technical security review involving reverse engineering of all source code, source code was performed on DJI products and that this deep technical analysis confirmed DJI products show no malicious code or intents and are recommended for use from a security perspective. It was not a report that commented on or changed DOD uh, procurement policy, which is governed by a 2019 statute and which is what the DOD statement today simply reiterates. The DOD source code analysis is the latest on a long list of third-party security examinations of DJI technology during the past three years, and no evidence has ever been presented in support of the notion that DJI products are a threat to national security. I think one of the things that Brendan here is uh, referring to is the Bruce uh, Hamilton report, or Bruce Allen Hamilton report that came out not too long ago. Um, as far as I know, and I've been writing about this and researching this uh, quite a bit over the last few years, I haven't seen any evidence either that shows that uh, any information is purposely leaked to the Chinese government from DJI. Uh, so flying DJI drones myself, I'm not too concerned. I also know that if you take your drones offline, then there really is no way that that data could be transmitted. So I'm not too worried about it. Um, of course, you never know what might be happening behind the scenes. I still believe that this is very much a politically driven topic and uh, yeah, hopefully that will at some point become easier um, or at least for federal federal agencies to be working with DJI drones because we do know that a lot of their work, uh, especially within the Department of the Interior, is being hindered by not being able to either use these drones or buy the latest equipment. Uh, so it's still it's still an issue there. Well, so it's basically back to status quo at this stage and uh, still can't buy them. Yeah, you know, I know some of you had made comments last week on uh, on this topic because we mentioned that as well. And and some of you have asked, where, where's the proof? Has there been any proof? And just like you said, there, there hasn't been that we have seen. Uh, some people say it's an internal report. It can't be shared because it's, it's public security, blah, blah, blah. Uh, there's still no report. And, and a lot of people have tried to get into that code. So yeah, there were there were holes, and I think uh, not that it is an excuse. Uh, software have holes, but uh, there, there were some security holes in the software, and, and DJI was said they were pretty quick at fixing it. So um, yeah, well we'll see what the new flavor is next week, and uh, you know what uh, what we should believe about DJI if they're good or bad next week. It uh, it changes all the time apparently, and uh, what I do want to point out also is that there was a response real fast from the American Drone Alliance, which is uh, driven in large part it seems by Skydio because they're really the only drone manufacturer in that group of drone companies that has any serious funding uh, and is pretty active as far as I know in uh, in the lobbying circuit in uh, in Washington DC. Uh, I don't know how much they've been 
pushing it, but it, it kind of takes that whole discussion back to the blue SUES uh, segment where you have these American made uh, drones or American drone manufacturers that still use Chinese made parts, at least four out of five of them do. Uh, I don't know if they're behind this push, uh, it wouldn't surprise me. Um, again, my point of view is that you should define security, data security standards and other standards for equipment, including drones. It should not matter where a drone is built. Uh, I don't think that matters one bit at all. If you spec the right requirements to say, okay, this is what a drone needs to uh, be able to do in order to fly and be used by the federal government here in the United States. If your drone meets those requirements, that drone should be good to go. And DJI worked together with uh, the Department of the Interior what, two years ago to come up with the uh, government edition that drone was yeah. was basically built in partnership like all the software was changed uh, and adjusted so it would be totally secure so we have an exact two drones actually i think it's the matrice 600 and the uh, mavic enterprise uh, i believe at the but yep you're right yeah, so those two drones have been vetted and, and basically built in partnership with the government so that we would have uh, drones that are available for use with their data secured. Uh, if you see how much the Department of the Interior uses drones for their day-to-day -day work, I think it's a huge disadvantage for them not to be able to use uh, DJI drones. Yep, and that's what we reported. That's what we reported on last week. So if you missed that episode, make sure you head back to last week's episode because we talked about all the uh, implications. Well, Haya, thanks uh, for all the fresh news. For those of you that want more information, uh, make sure you head over to DroneExcel.co uh, to get all the information. You can actually sign up and get the email every day. I know I do, uh, where I get all the information about what's going on in the drone, uh, the drone news world. And Haya does a great job. So Haya, thanks for joining us this week and then uh, we'll see you next week again. Thank you, Greg. All right, the third story this week is the Tokyo Olympics, the opening ceremony. If you watch the show, uh, I watched it, not live because it was a little bit too early, but a uh, beautiful drone show with uh, a full globe that was rotating uh, on top of the stadium. It just looked like a, a huge hologram sitting there. Uh, it's been posted a bazillion time online. I'm sure you've seen it, but I wanted to mention it. Uh, this is the, the, the kind of things that can be done with drones, and I, I just think it's so cool. So I'm, uh, I'm glad that they were able to uh, do this and show the world what drones are capable of. The uh, last thing that I want to talk about this week is an autonomous drone that supposedly is going to be beating uh, humans at racing drones. And this is kind of an interesting thing. This is an interesting concept. I don't think this is a new thing. I think the DRL, the Drone Racing League, had something similar where they were trying to have AI beat their top uh, drone pilot. And, but this one is really interesting because instead of pre-planning a route to go around a track, what they did is they allowed the drone to make decisions, to decide which way was the quickest to go from point A to point B. And, uh, and of course, this adds a lot of complexity. And the interesting thing about this drone is the fact that all the calculations are not done in the drone, on board of the drone, they're done on the computer on the side and then the information is being sent to the drone in itself and then the drone gets to do uh, its flying. So the system is designed by the University of Zurich in Switzerland and, uh, and they're basically working on this project to see if they can actually beat uh, uh, actual humans flying the drone. So I think this is cool. Uh, it, it's really cool to see the technology, to see them work on this kind of technology. I'm sure there's a ton of applications on the side uh, for things that can be done with this kind of technology. This is not about racing, obviously, this is about developing technology that can be used for other application just like we see in a lot of other uh, different industries okay this is all I have for you guys this week as always like subscribe if you want to get the freshest news not uh, something that's two weeks old like we see on uh, in other places um, leave your comments I love answering your comments I like interacting with you guys always even if we don't agree on things uh, I like having these discussions because it kind of shows me what uh, you guys are saying so we got a lot of important topics this week so make sure that you uh, leave a comment and uh, and interact and uh, that's it fly safe and I'll see you guys next week